hates virtual things i do okay go to there i'm six zero all right good afternoon can you guys hear me okay can anybody hear me yes can we can hear you okay good 
Uh, thank you for your patience. This is the Wednesday, January 17th, 2024 afternoon session of the Portland City Council. Keelan, please call the roll. Good afternoon. Rubio. Here. Ryan. Here. Gonzalez. Here. Maps. Here. Wheeler. Here. And now we'll hear from legal counsel on the rules of order and decorum. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Portland City Council. To testify before council in person or virtually, you must sign up in advance on the council agenda, www.portland.gov slash council slash agenda. Information on engaging with the city council can be found on the council clerk's webpage. The presiding officer preserves order and decorum during city council meetings. The presiding officer determines the length of testimony. Individuals generally have three minutes to testify unless otherwise stated. A timer will indicate when your time is done. Disruptive conduct, such as shouting, refusing to conclude your testimony when your time is up, or interrupting others' testimony or council deliberations will not be allowed. If you cause a disruption, a warning will be given. Further disruption will result in ejection from the meeting. Anyone who fails to leave once ejected is subject to arrest for trespass. Additionally, council may take a short recess. Your testimony today should address the matter being considered. When testifying, state your name for the record. Your address is not necessary. Disclose if you're a lobbyist. If you're representing an organization, please identify it. And for testifiers joining virtually, please unmute yourself once the council clerk calls your name. Great. Thank you. And colleagues, before we get into our item this afternoon, I, I just want to state another reminder for the public. I know everybody's going stir crazy. We all want to get out of wherever we are ensconced uh, in a sheet of ice. It is still very treacherous out, and I know the forecast is for continued thawing over the course of the afternoon and into the evening, uh, but I just want to reiterate that it is still very treacherous outside. Once you get out of the downtown core or off the main routes, uh, it is a sheet of ice out there still. We have trees that are fully loaded. We have power lines that are coming down. Um, there is a very tragic situation that took place just over the lunch hour on Northeast Siskiyou. And I, I really want to thank uh, all of the first responders from police, fire, BOIC, uh, the PBOT folks, the folks from uh, the, the power company, uh, and others who responded to that situation. I know it is extremely traumatic for all of them, as well as the neighbors in the immediate vicinity. And by all accounts that I'm receiving, people were very, uh, you know, very cooperative and very helpful with the first responders. Unfortunately, uh, the public information is that this time there, there were three people who are deceased when a tree fell and the tree had live power lines in it. Somebody um, had come to assist and that individual was also impacted. So I, I just, you know, at, at the risk of sounding um, maybe a little overbearing, just really want people to understand it is still very dangerous out there and to please exercise extreme caution. Commissioner Maps. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you for um, that aside. And I, <clears throat> Although you touched on this in your comments, I just wanted to take a moment to uh, recognize my teams over at PBOT. I, they have been working around the clock. Um, we work closely with FIRE, too. I know FIRE has been going around the clock. Uh, true of all, everyone who has to show up for work, uh, I want them to know that um, the city council sees them and really appreciates the work they do. And we um, want to... I'd like to ask the public, um, as the mayor just did, to um, please help us out by uh, staying home until the roads get a little bit more clear. Thank, thank you, Commissioner. Um, so with that, we have uh, one item this afternoon. It is uh, a non-emergency ordinance land, and that is item number uh, 60, please. Amend the planning and zoning code to adopt temporary suspensions and permanent clarifications to development and process regulations as part of the housing regulatory relief project. Colleagues, today we're continuing our conversation on the Housing Regulatory Relief Project. Uh, as you'll recall, this project was brought to us by the Bureau of Planning and Sustainability and the Planning Commission. As a reminder, last Wednesday, January 10th, we had a briefing from BPS, the Bureau of Planning and Sustainability, on the proposal, and we heard a description of seven amendments brought collectively by Commissioners Rubio and Gonzalez. 
We also heard several hours of public testimony. The record was then closed and the, the oral record rather was closed. The written record remained open until Friday, January 12th. This item was continued to this afternoon for the council to vote on the seven amendments, which are currently on the table, meaning that they were proposed and they were seconded. Today, staff will remind us where we left off and what amendments were moved and seconded last week. Uh, I believe Commissioner Rubio needs to make a minor correction to one of her amendments as well. Uh, then we will discuss and vote on the amendments uh, each in turn. Because this is land use legislation, we won't be taking a final vote on the overall package today. I'll provide more information on next steps at the end of today's meetings. Because the record closed on Friday, January 12th, we will not be hearing public testimony today. So with that, I'll turn this over to Commissioner Rubio to introduce our presenters and share uh, any additional remarks she would like to make. Great, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, BPS staff, Patricia Diefendorfer, Sandra Wood, and Phil Namany to uh, do a short presentation um, of our amendments and catch us up. Thank Thanks, you. Commissioner thank Rubio. You. Oh, go ahead, Patricia. I was gonna just say that I'm handing over to staff. No problem, keep coming, thank you. <laughs> Well, thanks, uh, Mayor Wheeler and, and uh, Commissioner Rubio and the rest of the commissioners. And uh, after hearing this updated uh, weather news, I feel like uh, this presentation kind of pales in comparison in terms of importance. Um, but uh, I know out here in uh, Northeast Portland, Rose City, Hollywood area, it's still also just turned 33 degrees and it's still very icy. But uh, my thoughts are to the folks here on Northeast Siskiyou. Um, but uh, just to kind of give you an update, we are once again back in front of you um, to continue the discussions about the Housing Regulatory Relief Project and those amendments. Uh, Keelan, uh, we, we do have a short presentation. She's going to share that with you. Um, last week, as, uh, as Mayor Wheeler mentioned, we had a spirited uh, uh, hearing with uh, several testifiers and uh, and discussed the proposal and also uh, put uh, several amendments on the table. Um, we're going to do a quick summary of that uh, package, uh, what we kind of heard through the testimony and the amendments that are uh, under consideration. Uh, next slide. Uh, just to kind of bring everybody back into the loop here that the Housing Regulatory Relief Project, or HRRs, the acronym we're using, is the result of a combination of things, including a, a housing production survey that was done by uh, Commissioner Rubio and BDS in the spring, and the results uh, from that survey, as well as uh, ongoing discussions with BDS, uh, who, of course, do all the implementation of the permitting. Uh, the intent of that uh, of this project is to uh, lower the cost of development through some regulatory relief uh, and also to consider you know reductions in some processing uh, processes of the of the permits and land use reviews. Uh, many of the changes are temporary in nature and uh, would expire on January 1st, 2029. And uh, a provision in the ordinance would also um, provide opportunity for existing permits or land use reviews to take advantage of some of this relief. And we'll talk on that a little bit in detail on a future slide. Next slide. I just want to reiterate that there were 15 issues that we were looking at. Uh, this was the issues that came out of the Planning Commission's recommendation. Uh, during last week's presentation, we went through and, and provided a little more detail on several of these amendments, uh, such as the bicycle parking, ground floor, uh, the neighborhood contact, and, and a couple others. Um, next slide. One thing that's unique about this package uh, is in addition to the uh, amendments that we're proposing are a couple directives that are in the ordinance. And uh, these are specifically tailored to assist permits or land use reviews that are finding it difficult to begin construction. Uh, as some test fires uh, noted in some of the written and I believe also some of the oral testimony, there are permits that are currently under review and out there that are not feasible due to some of the financial conditions and some other issues. Uh, and this the testimony was uh, stated that the, 
providing some of this relief may allow them to get over the hump to be able to get those uh, permits issued and start construction. Uh, normally, uh, projects are, uh, are uh, reviewed at the time that the permit or land use review comes in. And so since this uh, set of amendments would norm, uh, don't, wouldn't come into effect until March 1st, uh, they wouldn't apply into, to permits that were came in before that. But this uh, uh, directive would allow some of these provisions to apply to permits that are already in the queue. Um, the second directive that we're uh, doing would further extend the approvals um, for land use reviews that were already uh, granted and uh, extend the uh, timeline that was given during the COVID emergency uh, so that these have a little bit more time to get their permits in order and get their financing. So these two uh, uh, directives sort of allow some things that are already in the queue to continue working towards getting permits and also uh, to potentially take advantage of some of the relief. Next slide. As you saw, we did have a, a, quite a bit of testimony. I think there was approximately 50 people that uh, had testified in person. I wanted to also give an update on the written testimony that was uh, uh, provided. Um, we got between December 20th when we opened up the testimony and uh, January 12th, we had more than 400 pieces submitted and just to let you know, the about 200 of those pieces were just submitted the last couple of days. So uh, by extending the uh, written testimony that extra couple of days, we, we have pretty much doubled the amount of written testimony. Um, roughly probably 70 to 75% of the testimony submitted was addressing concerns about further relaxing the bird safe glazing standards or the eco roof standards and generally expressed the support for what the planning commission had recommended on that i did want to also mention though that there were a lot of other uh, pieces of testimony that came in um, some of which uh, were supportive of the regulations in general and uh, pointed out how some of the uh, regulations could help with cost reductions uh, other uh, comments that came in were concerns and uh, kind of see on the side deck there what uh, some of the concerns were, but they kind of focused on issues around the uh, ground floor window and ground floor active use requirements, as well as some of the ground floor design requirements and the design oversight. Uh, there was a concern that reducing some of that oversight could uh, impact the design of ground floor spaces and street environments. Uh, there was a concern over further eroding the communications between developers and impacted neighborhoods, which uh, is partially addressed with the neighborhood contact piece. Uh, there were some comments about the impact of bike parking, both uh, positive and negative. And then lastly, there was a couple of comments related to vehicle parking, which we're not really addressing here, except for the fact that uh, we're uh, providing some changes to the approval criteria for a lot of conditional use reviews. Um, Next slide. Okay, I'm, we're going to go on to talk about the city council amendments. Um, there were several uh, amendments that were proposed uh, prior to the hearing, um, and we're going to go through those sets of amendments uh, in, in uh, the upcoming slides here. Next slide. Uh, the first set of amendments were a set of three that were uh, proposed by Commissioner Rubio. Uh, the first amendment uh, adds a series of uh, permanent changes to the inclusionary housing chapter. Uh, one change would ensure that our regulations align with uh, state law. And then the other changes reflect the updates to the program and findings that were made during the Housing Bureau's assessment of the current uh, code as it relates to uh, the inclusionary housing program. Uh, the idea was to provide some uh, uh, changes here that implement the uh, suggestions made by the inclusionary housing work group. Uh, the second amendment is, a, is really a technical fix uh, to align the central city's ground floor window requirements so that they're uh, in, uh, in keeping with this base on uh, ground floor window keep, uh, requirements. And then the third amendment that was proposed by Commissioner Rubio provided additional temporary flexibility uh, for just the design review of affordable housing projects. Um, and this flexibility is above and beyond what was proposed from the Planning Commission's recommendation. And the amendment further uh, reduces some process steps for affordable housing. Next slide. 
The next set of three slides was uh, presented by uh, uh, Commissioner Gonzalez. Um, and these, I'm, I'm labeling these as four through six. Um, there's a total of seven amendments, um, but uh, we kind of wanted to keep them as a set of seven here. So uh, I know last week we were kind of saying Gonzalez one, two, and three, but um, for the purposes I thought of going through and voting uh, just to avoid confusion, I thought we'd just number them consecutively. Um, but of, the, of those uh, Gonzalez amendments, the fourth amendment, um, We'll consider reinserting the temporary suspension of the bird safe glazing uh, standard uh, that applies in the central city and along the south reach of the river overlay zone uh, when housing is proposed. Uh, the fifth amendment uh, would consider revising the eco roof uh, standard to be a simple suspension of that standard when housing is provided. Um, in other words, it would kind of override what the Planning Commission uh, recommended, which was substituting solar panels for uh, eco roofs and instead just uh, temporarily suspend the eco roof uh, requirement entirely in the central city uh, when housing is provided. And then the sixth amendment would temporarily remove any advance notice or posting requirements of the neighborhood contact process uh, when the project includes housing. Currently, there's a requirement that the site be posted at least 35 days in advance and the uh, um, emails get sent to the, the recognized organizations at least 35 days in advance of submitting a permit or land use review. Um, I do want to mention um, before moving on to the next slide that I know at the end of the, the hearing there's some conversations as well about whether we should be focusing more on, on incentive-based um, options versus mandatory-based options. I do want to just kind of uh, state that we do have quite a few incentive-based options uh, where we increase floor area and, and height. Uh, those incentives are generally uh, require, uh, provided when people are providing affordable housing as that's the focus of, of, uh, of those uh, bonuses. I also want to mention that uh, we did provide the commissioner's assistance with some information on uh, the central city eco roof reviews that have gone on. Uh, we looked at uh, the design reviews that had occurred since the central city plan uh, uh, districts uh, amendments had gone in 2018 and found that uh, oh, a little over 20% of those reviews had asked for eco roof modifications generally to reduce the number of uh, the, the amount of roof area that's used for the eco roof. Um, and uh, the planning commission's recommendation essentially looked at substituting uh, solar panels for uh, eco roofs. So um, with that, uh, I think the, uh, the idea was, you know, the incentives that we do have already do kind of focus on affordable housing. And so I think there would need to be some greater discussion that occurs uh, for other types of incentives. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is the last uh, amendment that was proposed. Uh, and I do want to mention that this uh, uh, amendment really is dependent on what happens with the amendment, some of the other Gonzalez amendments, specifically Amendment 4 and 5. But uh, this amendment essentially expanded the directive so that uh, the suspensions of eco roofs and the suspensions of bird safe glazing could be uh, used by existing uh, submittals that are in the queue. And uh, this was a uh, directive was approved at the conclusion of the hearing. And uh, we did send out a, a memo last Friday about that. And uh, just kind of to reiterate, if uh, depending on what happens with amendments four and five, we may have to come back and readdress uh, amendment seven here and, and possibly reword it. Next slide. So that concludes our quick presentation of kind of update of what happened last week. Uh, we are available for questions. Um, and also, uh, we are going to uh, have some uh, ability to bring up the amendment memos in case those are necessary during the discussion. At this point, I'm going to uh, turn it back to uh, Commissioner Rubio. Mayor, is, is this where I go ahead and proceed with my yeah. amendments? Okay. Yeah, why don't, why don't you go ahead? Uh, my understanding is you have an amendment to your amendment. Why, why yes. don't you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, great. Thank and, you. Then you can move it. 
Great, thank you. Um, as a reminder, Amendment 1 advances the recommendations of the Housing Bureau's Inclusionary Housing Calibration Work Group, which finalized the recommendations in a letter dated July 27, 2023. And as staff shared last week, one of the changes is to the options for providing offsite affordable units. And I have one edit to make to that language, which I believe BPS staff have for you to see on a slide. If you can put it up, please. Thank you. Um, currently, the code requires a different percentage of affordable units for applicants who want to provide their IH units in another building nearby, depending on whether they do so in an existing building or in a new building. The IH, IH work group recommended simplifying this to use the same number in both scenarios. However, there was a Bureau staff error when this amendment was drafted, which they recently caught and brought to our attention. So we need to revise my amendment number one to use the same number, 20%, for both scenarios. This is a friendly revision to ensure that amendment one aligns with the inclusionary housing calibration work group. So I am asking, um, I'm making a motion and asking for a second to reflect the work group's recommendation. I'll second that. Commissioner Rubio moves, Commissioner Mapp seconds. It's an amendment to amendment one. Uh, is there any further clarification needed or discussion on this amendment? Please call the roll. Rubio. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Maps. Aye. Wheeler. And for the record, um, I am not calling for testimony on this because this is tantamount to a Scribner's error. I vote aye. The amendment to the amendment is adopted. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Rubio. So at this point now, we'll go through and discuss and vote on all the amendments that were just presented by staff. And uh, I'll go ahead and use the numbering, just the sequential numbering that staff had recommended just to keep everything uh, on the up and up and easy to follow here. So the first amendment uh, to remind everybody is Rubio 1. It relates to inclusionary housing. Is there any further discussion on Commissioner Rubio's amendment? Seeing none, please call the roll. Rubio. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Maps. Aye. Wheeler. Uh, I'll, I'll just give my, my semi-long speech here, but I'll, I'll try to keep it short. Um, I'm obviously going to support this, and I want to thank Commissioner Rubio. Uh, this is a yeoman's effort to bring forward all of this package. Um, there have been, uh, I, I think she took into account the spirit of the conversations that were had by the Planning Commission she and her staff have further reached out and refined through some of these amendments, things that, that she and her team have heard that I support. And uh, I know that when we get into these issues of development and housing, there are lots of different opinions on a lot of different issues, uh, but this is a really solid package, Commissioner, and I appreciate you bringing this forward. I vote aye on Amendment 1. Amendment 1 from Commissioner Rubio passes. Next, we'll go, and that's the amendment as amended, just for the record. Rubio 2 is the central city ground floor windows. It's a technical amendment to clarify application of the ground floor window requirement in the central city plan district. Uh, is there any further discussion on this amendment? Seeing none, please call the roll. Rubio. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Maps. Aye. Miller. Aye. The amendment is adopted. Rubio 3 was uh, to offer affordable housing projects a lower design review procedure type. Is there any further discussion on this amendment, Commissioner Maps? Yeah, I have a, I have a, um, uh, some feedback. I'm going to vote in favor of this. Um, I did have some technical concerns, which I wanted to share with Commissioner Rubio's office, but frankly, given the events of the past seven days, we didn't really have a chance to fully connect on this. Here's what I'm hearing from my infrastructure staff um, about Amendment 3. Um, there's concern about um, uh, 
skipping or you know, let's see for, for the this is Mr. Your maps are frozen on my screen oh can you can you guys hear me yes yeah okay Renee or uh, Commissioner Gonzalez can you hear me well uh, I think we might be freezing on each other I'm going to proceed um uh, assuming that folks can hear me, uh, Commissioner Rubio and colleagues, um, one of the concerns I hear from infra Infrastructure Bureau staff is that with Amendment 3, we might be skipping some early consultation conversations, which actually kind of avoid uh, problems down the road. Um, I'm willing to kind of, on an act of faith, go forward with this, but one of the things I sure hope that we can do is conduct an evaluation before we get to the end of the five years here to see if we are starting to see uh, problems emerge with these kinds of developments. Uh, um, you know, it's very easy, specifically with like sewer pipes and water pipes. Uh, um, if you skip some of the early detail work, you get for fairly far down the road and then my folks will tell you, you need to put in a bigger pipe or something like that. Um, I, I'm not going to ask us to fix this now, but um, and I don't think we need to fix it in uh, statute, but I think that uh, if the Bureau is just mindful of this and evaluates uh, how this thing unfolds, um, I think that would be good policy. Thank you, Commissioner Rubio. Um, I just want to thank Commissioner Maps. Thank you for your feedback. I hear it, and I think that's a good idea. And we're we'll, we're uh, ready to engage with you and your teams afterward. Great. And if I can jump back in here, I uh, I didn't do my staff will do a better job of articulating my specific concerns. I'll get my team together with your team, and we can flesh out uh, uh, um, maybe some of the things to keep an eye out for. Thank you. Very good. Any further discussion on Rubio three? Please call the roll. Rubio. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Maps. Aye. Wheeler. Aye. Rubio three passes. Uh, now we'll go to Commissioner Gonzalez's amendments. And I, I just have sort of a general question, Gonzalez. First of all, I want to thank you for the time you've taken with me in the last couple of days to uh, to go through your amendments and the genesis and your thinking on them. Um, we last night had toyed with the possibility of potentially going through a work session and having further public discussion on these amendments. I'm, I'm wondering if you'd had any further thoughts on that. I'm completely supportive of it. Um, I, you know, the I think this these topics have been pretty fully discussed to date. But I, um, it, if if we can create further space to uh, really look at the comprehensive burdens we're putting on development versus the societal benefits, uh, and also how to provide more clarity, a clear signal to the development community that we're open for business uh, without abandoning some of our core values as a city uh, in terms of sustainability. If if my colleagues, you know, find would be supportive of, it, I'm supportive of it, um, and. Um, I, I would, my only caution is the same one I gave uh, last night, Mayor, and just putting on the record. Um, I feel like this council has a very small window to be impactful here. And I have greater confidence in what this group can do uh, right now than the unknowns of what occurs after January 1, 2025. I, so the, the, my, the fundamental point is we are on the clock and we have a, a limited window to have impact. Um, it, so that's my only caveat on, on that discussion, but I, I'm open to it if my colleagues are supportive. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that. Commissioner Maps. Um, I just wanna jump in here and say, I appreciate this dialogue and I appreciate uh, Commissioner Gonzalez's um, openness to uh, continuing this discussion. I'll tell you uh, what the amendments that Commissioner Gonzalez uh, put on the table, I'm very uh, sympathetic to. Um, I, we need to make it easier to build in Portland um, at the same time, especially as your commissioner in charge of environmental services, I'm concerned with uh, some of the details that are on the table here. Um, and at the same time, I kind of share Commissioner Gonzalez's desire to move us towards um, an incentive-based uh, um, approach to promoting uh, development, especially economic or ecologically friendly development. 
Um, I think we can get there. Um, you know, for example, earlier in the, today's presentation, we heard from staff who said, you know, guys, you have um, incentives for affordable housing, um, and it might be possible to think of uh, do something similar around um, environmentally friendly development. You know, I don't know if that means looking at floor area ratios or whatnot, uh, but that's one idea which I'm excited about. I'd love to delve in more. Uh, I pledge to get my people at the table. Um, and try to move us forward and make a meaningful uh, dent in um, some of the, the bureaucracy and costs associated with uh, getting stuff built in Portland. So I just wanted to share that and uh, have very much appreciated the conversations of the last week or so. Thank, thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Gonzalez. Uh, just to chime in on one piece, we have, uh, we've alluded to over the last couple of weeks and uh, have continued to evaluate as an office uh, some sort of resolution directing staff to identify further incentives. It's really not ready for prime time, uh, to be candid. Um, we we want to, uh, on that piece, uh, that isn't subject to uh, some of the time constraints, uh, we, we want to create some space to really evaluate that resolution. We have a draft started, but we're not quite ready to circulate to others. We hope to do soon if we... Um, if we want to make that part of the work session, I would be totally supportive of it. And um, uh, just to further the dialogue, I do want to uh, build off of one point that Commissioner Maps was getting at, um, and it harkens back to staff comments. I, I think as a body, we've been pretty intelligent in thinking about these incentives for affordable housing, but part of our problem in the market is we're not generating enough of market housing either. And that has a that puts pressure on all Portlanders in their affordability and certainly has a downstream impact on those in the lowest income rung. So we don't have sufficient market uh, uh, supply. It impacts everybody, uh, uh, including those in the low income bracket. So. Um, I, I would be very open to thinking about smart incentives across the development uh, continuum. We're not here to incentivize high, highly expensive apartments or, uh, or, or housing, but I, I, I do want us to think about overall, if we're not meeting our housing production goals, what is this total package we need to look at to, to drive that holistically? And I'll, I'll turn over to my colleagues or from there. Uh, Commissioner Maps, then Commissioner Rubio. Um, I was just going to ask Commissioner Rubio, uh, since she's had, she has been our champion and our Sherpa on this one, uh, I, was, I was curious to see what her thinking is in this space. I'll lower my hand and listen. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Maps. And um, I just want to uh, appreciate uh, the interest in, in, in the conversation. This is one that has been alive and, and happening for many, many months. And in fact, I just want to remind everyone that this has been a very, very long process from our first conversations um, in my office, probably even, I, well, I know, preceding my office to when uh, Commissioner Ryan even had um, the, the Bureau, um, also with stakeholders and to, uh, from stakeholders uh, conversations to the BDS survey, to the Planning Commission, to this point. Uh, and it's been about a year's uh, complex and painstaking work by staff and our stakeholders and the planning commission and bureaus. And they've examined, discussed multiple scenarios and ideas. Um, that said, if there's new information or ideas that the staff has not considered to chew on, um, uh, we're open to hearing those ideas. It's important though, uh, and I, I really wanna underscore this, that we acknowledge and respect the years plus uh, work that has already been undertaken and the conversations and the work that has been had. Um, I also want to strongly uh, recommend that any new conversations would ensue after we have a good idea of what the governor and the legislature are going to do um, and who have also uh, been working on this for almost a year and what they're bringing forward so that we don't have to go back and start again. And I also want to just note for the record that if any proposals um, come from future conversations, um, they will in fact uh, be land use con uh, decisions again and will require going back to the planning commission. 
So with this in mind, um, my team and I are here for any follow-up conversations and next steps. Uh, Commissioner Gonzalez, thank you, Commissioner Rubio. Yeah, no, I, I think there was were well said, Commissioner Rubio. I, I do want to point out one challenge with the state legislature on this subject and hearkening back to the 2023 session, you know, the governor pushed very hard for a substantial housing package that ultimately failed on the last day of the session. And I just want to acknowledge that many of the same forces that came into play on the eco roofs and the, the bird glazing uh, that appears at the Planning Commission uh, really sunk the, the governor's housing package in the last session. So I, I share um, the, the perspective that we need to take into account what's occurring at the state, uh, but also acknowledge that it's unpredictable um, and that they are subject to some of the same um, pressures that apply in our case and, and you know from my vantage point led to suboptimal outcome i think the governor would argue it also led to suboptimal outcome in the 2023 uh state legislative session so um the and uh, and last but not least you know certainly our first two amendments we felt were actually respectful of the staff's work we were bringing back what we perceived to be their original recommendations. I know there were twists and turns in that discussion, um, but it was not meant to anyway second guess staff. We, we felt like we were actually supporting uh, a direction they were originally going. Th thank you, Commissioner Gonzalez. Commissioner Rubio. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to uh, keep my hand up, but I will say since it was up, um, well, the good thing is that this is a short session, so it shouldn't be that long to, to figure out uh, where what the, that direction will be. Um, and also, once the state puts into place uh, what it is going to, we can have that information to do an analysis. And also, as our housing production strategy takes more shape um, this spring, we can have further conversations about other le levers that we can pull or changes that we can make at the local level. So I'm happy to make that commitment. Very good. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Maps. Maybe I'll let it lie now. I'm, I'm sorry. Good. I'm good. Okay, good. So let, let me see if I can clarify where we are, because there's there's two divergent paths. And ultimately, uh, Commissioner Gonzalez, these are your amendments, so you get to decide. Um, one path is that we wait and see what the legislature does. We agree that we will hold a work session or at least one work session whereby we would go through and thoroughly vet the proposals and potentially amend or add other ideas to the table. Uh, and then it would be brought back to council if there's still an interest on your part or other commissioners part to bring it back to council as an ordinance that would obviously take place subsequent to February so that we would have the opportunity to hear what the legislature does, that's that's one path. Another path is we move forward and vote on the amendments today, and I'll leave it to your discretion to decide. Uh, Commissioner Maps may have a comment as well. The only thing I wanna say here is that as the commissioner in charge of the Bureau of Environmental Services, I would very much appreciate having a work session where we explore creating incentives to incentivize uh, uh, environmentally friendly uh, development. I think that's a conversation that uh, we have the talent in the room to have. Um, I, I'm, although I'm interested to hear what happens down in Salem, I think we can also shape our own fate in this space. All right, thank you. Commissioner Gonzalez. You know, I think uh, maybe these are two paths aren't mutually exclusive. Um, you know, I, I, it is conceivable we can vote now um, see where everybody is that keeps that part of the process moving along uh, and then uh, create the space for a work session uh, to to revisit uh, these pieces um, and uh, adjust as we as is necessary. And yes, we I, as Commissioner Rubio suggested, we can incorporate the suggestions or incorporate what we learned from the state legislature short session um and so i i think maybe the vote now and and the work session are not mutually exclusive all right so uh, i take it then that we will move forward on the vote is that correct uh, i'm i'm fine with that okay very good so first up is gonzalez one and just as a reminder i'm sorry we were going to change the numbering it's now on uh 
uh, this is amendment number four, which is Gonzalez number one, which reinstates the staff's original proposal to temporarily suspend bird safe glazing requirements in the river overlay zone in Central City Plan District when a proposal includes a residential use. Any further discussion on this item? Um, I'll just put my two cents in this, uh, as you may have guessed from my, uh, my comments earlier, uh, I believe we can get farther as a council if we take some time to thoroughly look at this in more detail than we've had the opportunity to do so. Uh, I don't see this as an all or nothing strategy. I think there are probably intermediate things that we should at least look at. I understand that we, and I, in all fairness, I was here uh, as part of the council that voted for this initially. So I, I wanna be clear on that, but I also know a lot of cities subsequently did similar projects, but they had the benefit of science as well as uh, experience and that led some cities, as I understand it, with my rudimentary knowledge here, to pursue different strategies, maybe above certain levels, uh, you know, further evaluation of migratory patterns um, and further cost analysis. We heard a couple of cost estimates, or at least a cost estimate during public testimony, uh, but I've, I've not had a chance to ask our staff about the relative uh, additive cost. Uh, I am very hopeful that bird glazing alone is not the sole impediment to people developing in this city. I understand we're, we're looking at a bigger picture here, uh, but I, I just want to be very clear um, for my part that I, I think this can be further refined with more public discussion or at least expert uh, uh, analysis, uh, and at the very least having our city staff have the time to take a harder look at this. Um, so I, I just want to be clear up front about that. But with that, please call the roll. Rubio. Um, first, I want to thank uh, the mayor. Thank you for your comments. And um, I agree with a lot of what you said. Um, I'm also going to be a no on all three of these for a few reasons. Um, some I've already mentioned. Uh, first and foremost, these are all really complex policies that the Planning Commission took the time to dive into and vet for us. And I want, to honor, I want to honor their expertise and their work. I also have concerns around the idea that we have to, um, as a mayor reference, like uh, we don't have to uh, make a choice between environmental sustainability and housing. We can and we must do both. And that is the way forward. Uh, and finally, this has been a long, very public process. And what has been important to me in shepherding this project is that we have a transparent process where council offices and external stakeholders and other members of the public have the opportunity to track what's going on and also provide input. So with these amendments, some, um, you know, we know are controversial to some folks um, being posted online less than 24 hours before the public hearing, um, you know, it, it, it causes issues with the public's trust in us or exacerbates existing um, uh, perceptions of that, which is bigger than any one of us or any one issue. Um, it's just in general. So for everyone who provided testimony on these items, both in support of the changes and opposed, I want to thank you for your time. Um, thanks uh, for engaging with our office um, over the course of the year. Um, and uh, I hear you and I appreciate um, the healthy tension. And, and this is the the place where we have to come and sit at the table and work these things through. They're tricky issues that I know that none of my colleagues on these council on the council take these uh, decisions lightly. In fact, it's very clear that we very much care and we're committed to um, finding a way through. So with that, I vote no. I didn't hear my name. Yeah, I was right. muted. Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> Uh, I will do my remarks on both four and five with uh, amendment number four. Like the Planning Commission, it looks like we're split today. From watching the Planning Commission meeting, uh, Commissioner Gonzalez's amendments resurrect the original proposal that I was hearing when I was listening to the Planning Commission meetings that came from staff. As such, this dialogue is not last minute. Today, the Council is the last resort to bring back that original legislation. I want to thank the staff at BPS. From watching the Planning Commission meetings, I have so much more deep respect for three of you that I can see on the screen. So thank you, Sandra, Phil, and Patricia. The way that you um, 
it was so impressive to see when real time um, answer the, the questions as the debates loomed. Because again, these were the topics that had the planning commission split. And as one member from the planning commission said, it was the first split vote on a project they had ever experienced. So please know we're in a, we're in a different time in terms of um, having some robust um, debate about something so important as housing. Again, it's no surprise that the council then is split at this time. We all want to protect the environment and we also all want to accelerate housing production. For years now, we hear the objective data that we received for over two decades, I've been seeing this data that supply, we have a supply problem and we do need to partner with the private sector to rapidly increase the number of housing units. The balanced testimony also reflected the split that we received last week. It was very good testimony at the meeting we had last Wednesday afternoon. We need 120,000 new housing units by 2045. We must innovate to accelerate housing and treat this like the emergency it truly is. As mentioned in the pre-amendment vote, dialogue was taking place with my colleagues. I do hope that PSEP and BES can come together and provide incentives for our builders. Right today, I just hope that we go. Let's start building. I vote aye. Gonzalez. Uh, we need to increase housing production in Portland, plain and simple. And I'm going to speak generally to the three amendments and then we'll have some specific comments on number four. Uh, we need to lower the cost of housing for all Portlanders and provide for the housing needs of, not of our most vulnerable and as well as uh, through the middle class. That necessitates taking a hard look at how we incentivize and not disincentivize development of both affordable market housing while balancing other critical concerns like the environment and protecting our natural resources. I'm pleased in general to support the housing regulatory reform, reform package as it is an important step to lower barriers to housing production in our city. I do want to thank Commissioner Rubio and her team for all their work to get us here. But I would also add, we have a small window to uh, operate as council. And um, I, I'll reiterate my earlier comments. I have greater confidence in the ability of this council to be pragmatic in a very complex topics uh, than whatever may come next. Uh, and with respect to the process that occurred here, um, I think folks are going to look at this history, at, at least some, uh, in, in a way that is different than Commissioner Rubio characterized it. The development community felt like an end around was put on them at the Planning Commission. They were not given the opportunity to comment uh, once uh, the Planning Commission amended the original package. Uh, they felt excluded from that process. And, and you know, again, I, I think there's going to be different perceptions on how we got here. Uh, but I do want to be clear that, with, at least with respect to Amendments 4 and 5, this was consistent with the original staff recommendations. Uh, we also heard extensive testimony from the community last week on the cost created by Bird Glazens and Eco Roos. Um, and the fundamental point here is not the incremental cost of any one of these requirements. It's really the death by a thousand cuts and in the aggregate, the impact on development. And last but not least, what message it sends to the development community. I, I worry that we missed an opportunity here uh, uh, and really are two, one of our you know last remaining two opportunities to meaningfully address as a council how to attract capital, how to attract development in the city of Portland. Um, I will, and I do wanna harken back again to uh, the 2023 general session um, that precisely what happened here happened there. Uh, special interests uh, were able to uh, really land late in the game. In that case, it was environmental movement. Uh, that's what's occurred here, at least at the Planning Commission. Um, I do look forward to bringing resolutions back to Council uh, to look at the incentives, as we alluded to earlier, including uh, how we find, you know, continue to balance incentives in the overall equation. I think with that, I will, um, I, I'm voting aye on this amendment. Thank you. Maps. 
Uh, I'm going to vote no on this one, but I do want to say I very much appreciate uh, the conversation that Commissioner Gonzalez has provoked, and I'm deeply sympathetic uh, um, to the policy direction that he wants to move us as a city in. Um, I think I would much rather run the city on the basis of a series of incentives as opposed to a series of unfunded mandates. I actually think that uh, this policy space is exciting because I believe that uh, this council could come together which and develop a series of, uh, of incentives that would promote economically um, uh, up that would promote uh, environmentally friendly development. Um, I think we heard some ideas even from staff today, maybe look at floor area ratios in exchange for installing um, eco roofs or bird safe glasses. I'm sure there are other ideas too. Um, in general, um, I reject the notion that uh, protecting the environment and promoting development are at odds. I think uh, Portland's future has to include uh, doing both. I think we can. Um, and that's why um, I look forward to our work session where we explore these ideas in greater detail. Uh, but for the moment, I will vote no on this one. Wheeler. Yeah, so uh, I, I also just want to say I, I appreciate the conversations that these amendments have sparked and commissioner gonzalez uh, again i want to thank you for for reaching out and taking multiple calls and taking the time uh even when we were all managing ice storms everything else yeah. in response uh, I, I appreciated that opportunity so here's how i sort of look at the bigger picture and I'll, I'll get to the specific amendment in a minute but i i do want to talk to the bigger picture uh this proposal morphed and it morphed fairly significantly uh, from my perspective, in terms of what I was originally planning to hear, which was Commissioner Rubio bringing forth the Planning Commission recommendations after a lengthy stipulated process with some minor staff amendments. And what happened was um, this became a much larger discussion about incentives, about costs, about what what generally and specifically uh, do we need to do around development? And the problem with that, from my perspective, as I indicated earlier, is we're, we're, we're not giving the broader conversation the full discussion that, frankly, it deserves. And I agree with Commissioner Gonzalez that this council provides a unique opportunity to look at this um, in a different way than potentially future councils might. Um, but I, I'd like to give it the, the time and the energy and frankly, uh, the the uh, depth of, of uh, analysis that it deserves. Uh, I don't see this as our last opportunity. Again, I think there's plenty of time to bring other ideas to this council subsequent to the February session. I agree with Commissioner Rubio. It would be wise for us to wait and see what happens. Commissioner Gonzalez, I also agree with you that we don't know what will happen, and the answer may be nothing. Uh, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. Uh, we still don't lose out if we wait till after the February session. I am uh, also mindful of the fact that these three items that we're discussing today aren't on the list of things that I have heard about over the last seven years as mayor as being significant impediments to affordable housing development. And I want to go back into the way back machine just for a moment since I've been here the longest. First, during Central City 2035, which was a complete rework of our Central City zoning, uh, I listened to the development community, and I was persuaded by the arguments of the development community that height and density in the central city core were essential to the development of housing as well as commercial space in this city, and that if we pass central city 2035 with significant amendments, many of which I introduced personally on behalf of the development community, we would see the kind of developments that the city of Portland needs. And I'll just remind people, I burned a lot of my political capital very early in my administration on Central City 2035, including effectively spot zoning parts of our city where we thought 
we could generate substantial height and density, particularly around housing. And we had developers come in and testify that if we pass these amendments, they would build. And I'm still looking at a lot of parking lots where my political capital was burned, but no housing was developed. After that, I was told, if only we pass better housing by design, and that I offer a strategy there that would enable further development in our many disparate neighborhoods, the housing would get built. So we passed better housing by design. Then there was the residential infill program. And you know, I, uh, by the way, I agree with this philosophy in the urban core, we absolutely should build high, we should build dense, and we should have infill. Uh, because that protects the environment around our city, which is one of our greatest assets as a community, frankly, in my opinion, uh, we passed the residential infill program. And that was probably the most controversial of all, because that led to increased development and increased density in our residential neighborhoods. And it did change the character of our city. And we knew it would change the character of our city because our city was growing, frankly and we needed to be able to create housing. So we pushed through there. Um, then what I heard loudly and clearly was it was the permitting that was causing the problems. And I've seen not one, not two, but three of my colleagues here on this city council uh, in sequence try to tackle the permitting issue at the city of Portland and simplify it, reduce the cost, reduce the hassle factor. And a lot of good work has gone into that not not just here on the public sector side, but our private sector developers have invested a lot of their time and their energy to address those permitting issues. Well, uh, then of course, from there, we got to our core mission around homelessness, around public safety, around livability, around economic recovery. And this council has fought tooth and nail to make those changes. Uh, of late, we've even created tax incentives, and we've asked other jurisdictions to hold the line on taxes because we were told that was an impediment. And uh, you know, that doesn't even get to some of the macroeconomic issues, which are really the main drivers, which are interest rates, inflation, and labor shortages. You know, we don't impact that stuff really to any great degree at all. Uh, but now here we are talking about bird glazing, eco roofs, and neighborhood contacts as though they were the primary impediments to affordable housing development in our community. And while I agree that you know, if you add these things up collectively, it can put us at a competitive disadvantage, particularly given those macroeconomic issues I just mentioned, uh, if we're going to address these core issues and we're going to say, OK, if we just get rid of the environmental protections and we just get rid of the wildlife protections and we just get rid of the public involvement in the contacts piece, everything's going to be great. Um, I personally don't buy it. And if we're going to address these issues, I would like us to take the time to bring thoughtful, measured, vetted proposals to the city council that uh, don't, as Commissioner Maps, I think more eloquently than I could state, said we're, we don't have to make that trade-off between the environment or housing or wildlife and the environment or public involvement and housing. There, there, There's probably better ways we can do this, and I'm just asking for patience as we do that. So uh, mindful of the fact that we do have more time to bring back thoughtful proposals and maybe beyond these three, uh, I vote no, and the amendment fails. So the next one is Gonzalez number two, which is actually now amendment number five pertaining to eco roofs. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Rubio. No. Ryan. Aye. Gonzalez. Oh, the audio on this one, I apologize. I'm just gonna, I, I did have some slightly additional comments on the eco roofs. Um, extensive requirements for eco roofs in central city residential development was cited as a top barrier from developers. I think it was number 12 on their overall list in the Housing Production Survey Commission by Commissioner Rubio. Again, the Planning Commission 
essentially ignored the staff recommendations here and uh, suggested supplementing panel uh, solar panel installation in lieu of the eco roofs as an alternative. Uh, that's despite it being a higher cost alternative than eco roof requirements. Uh, again, ignoring the cost concerns raised by housing providers. Uh, temporary moratorium on eco roofs will allow the flexibility needed to balance out multiple objectives for a project. For example, some projects may prioritize solar array or an eco roof or a white roof that reflects light and provides passive cooling for the building. This proposal, what we put forth, uh, will enhance the project's viability by letting the market drive these, these, these decisions, which may also have greater positive impact on climate concerns. And let me just be crystal clear on this point. Eco roofs are not going to be built unless we have new construction, whether it's often, whether it's a requirement or an option. And um, it, it, we need new construction to drive the introduction of these eco roofs. Uh, I do want to emphasize to the mayor again, uh, neither of these two uh, proposals, uh, Amendment 4 or 5, are last minute. They were originally staff proposals. Uh, and, uh, you know, I take some exception to your characterization there. Uh, the, uh, these were well vetted. Uh, the public uh, commented on what we have essentially proposed on Amendment 4 and Amendment 5 to the Planning Commission. Uh, the elements that were outside of the light of day were, uh, in, in the sense of giving an opportunity for comment, were the uh, Planning Commission's uh, choice to ignore the site recommendation or staff recommendations here. So I, I do want to emphasize that point as I vote aye. Thank you. Maps. Um, as the commissioner in charge of working with the teams who manage our stormwater, I got to share this with my colleagues and the people of Portland. Our wastewater engineers and our stormwater engineers tell me that uh, moving away from our um, eco roof program is a bad idea. You know, just in the downtown area, we're trying to manage about 2.5 million uh, square feet of impervious uh, areas. All that water is coming in. Equal roofs are an important tool for, for managing that. Um, well, I, what I want to do, instead of moving away from eco roofs, what I'd like to do is create programs that makes it easier for people to install eco roofs. It's one of the things that keeps us from dumping uh, dirty water in the river, um, which is why um, I'm going to vote no on this one. However, I do look forward to a future work session where we can explore um, incentive programs that will make it easier for uh, building owners to um, install these important uh, stormwater management tools. So with that, I vote now. Wheeler. So um, first of all, I, I do not agree with removing the eco roofs part of this proposal. I, I, I support eco roofs. Uh, I think they serve an important role in the future of our community. I think they're also critical to our climate action goals, which we as a council have universally supported in the past. I would not want to backtrack, but I also want to note that uh, uh, this was well vetted by the Planning Commission, and it's my understanding that what we're voting on today is in fact a compromise. It's already a compromise proposal between those who support um, uh, eco design and the development community, and that's why there's more flexibility. What we had originally passed at council was eco roofs, but now it's eco roofs or solar panels. So there's some flexibility there on the part of the developers. I thought that was a, a good compromise that I certainly support, um, but, but I do not support backtracking on eco roofs. I think that's a move in the wrong direction and therefore I vote no and the amendment fails. Uh, now we'll vote on uh, amendment six, which is Gonzalez three related to neighborhood contacts. Is there any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, please call the roll. Rubio. No. Ryan. Yeah, I think neighborhoods should have a voice in the development uh, that's being proposed. I think that um, I realize this has potential for adding a little bit of time, but it's such a critical step in engaging with the neighborhood 
what you're building is just part of doing business. So, um, and it's my experience that you learn some real additive, uh, you learn some additive information when you're having that type of engagement um, with the neighborhoods. And usually there's a nugget in there when you're in the in those um, conversations. So, and I also was a little disappointed I didn't hear about a lot of outreach to the, the district coalitions or, uh, via um, Civic Life. So on this one, I will vote no. Gonzalez. So the, the basic concept here is that, I'm gonna make sure I'm not on mute, uh, is that you still have to post notice. You just don't have to wait a 35 day period uh, to file for a permit. That's the basic concept here. It's not to circumvent uh, public engagement. It's just to uh, compress the development cycle. Um, and by some estimates, this increases construction costs by 1%, the 35 day delay. Um, it's just the, the the value of money right now, the time value of money uh, in our current interest rate environment. Um, with that, I vote aye. Maps. Um, this is when I've gone back and forth on. Again, I appreciate what Commissioner Gonzalez is trying to accomplish here. Um, at the same time, um, I actually found um, Commissioner Ryan's comments on this uh, to be compelling. I certainly hope that in Portland, um, dialogue with your neighbors about um, about development will actually make projects um, better. Um, that doesn't mean that I believe that our current neighborhood contact uh, protocol is ideal. I am uh, more than open to sitting down and having a, a thoughtful conversation about how we can make this better, how we can make that contact process better uh, for everybody. Um, but eliminating or dramatically cutting it back, I think, um, doesn't get us to where we need to go. So I'm going to vote no on this one. However, when we get to the work session, um, although I'm primarily focused in on the environmental pieces there, I would be very open to having um, a creative dialogue about how we could make our public contact uh, processes better. So uh, with that, I vote no. Wheeler. Yeah, I don't I don't support getting rid of the public contact requirement. I'm not sure if 35 days is necessary either. So I, I'm certainly open minded about where that lands. Uh, but in this current form, I vote no and the amendment fails. Uh, so thank you, colleagues. Are there any more comments before I continue this item to January 24th? There's one more amendment there. Uh, it's dead. Yeah, I don't think it's it's dependent. Oh, uh, it's dependent well, on. Thanks the for explaining that right now. Got it. Yeah, I think that the Here's uh, Patricia. Yeah, Commissioner Gonzalez just needs to withdraw the amendment. It it would have no okay. effect if you could just All withdraw right. it for the purposes of the. Right. I'm happy to withdraw. I just wanted to see if Patricia had comments first before I. Thank you, Commissioner Gonzalez. No, I was going to just echo what um, City Attorney King has said. Thank you. All right, um, I withdraw the amendment. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further comments before we move this? Seeing none, uh, thank you, colleagues. This item is continued to a hybrid meeting on January 24th at 3 p.m. time certain. The physical location will be, okay, now I'm confused by my own talking points. It says it's hybrid, uh, so why is there a physical location? Maybe legal counsel could help me out here. Because uh, there'll be both. People can appear virtually and then counsel will be in person beginning. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I how I read this at all. Okay, so this item is continued to January 24th at 3 p.m. time certain. The location for those who wish to be in person will be 1900 Southwest 4th Avenue, room 2500. At that time, counsel will vote on the amended documents and findings to reflect the amendments passed today and the testimony we heard. We will not be taking additional testimony on January 24th as the oral and written records are now closed. Thank you all. That concludes today's meeting. We are adjourned. <laughs>